Hello, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to um, the webinar this morning. Um, I'm going to be, my name is Rachel Carl, and I'm the head of advancement here at Delphian. Um, I, I'm just going through uh, to see who's on. Looks like we have a few people on the webinar this morning. And we'll be talking about bridging the educational gap created by COVID-19. Um, once again, my name is Rachel Carl, and I am the head of advancement here at Delphian. And um, I'm we've been hearing from a lot of parents on the webinars um, and also on social media that you are um, you know you're all at home with your sleeves rolled up wearing your educator hat along with your parent hat along with uh, many of you continuing to work from home as i am doing here as well um, so I have, I put together some information that can help us with bridging that gap between the disruptions in the school year and the disruptions with school. Um, we have a lot of online learning happening in schools all around the world, and which is wonderful, but there have definitely been some interruptions and very potentially some gaps in our children's education as a result of COVID-19 and, and all of the, um, you know, everything that's been happening with school and education. So let's see who we have on here this morning. Um, I see we have um, Hadia, James, Catherine, Kelly, Milo, Olivia, um, Veronica. Okay, great. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about in today's webinar is how to support your child when they need you the most with increasing academic confidence, gaining good study skills and habits, repairing and filling in gaps with writing, reading, math, and all subjects. So that's what we're going to be chatting about today. Um, we'll take about um, 30, 30 to 40 minutes uh, just going over some information that I put together that I think will be useful for you. It's information that comes from our faculty training manuals here at the school and also from the curriculum that we use from Heron Books um, when we're educating uh, the children that, that we work with at Delphian School. Um, so some information that I think is really useful as a parent and as an educator. I have three children. Uh, two of them have graduated from Delphian. Our, my oldest son is 24. I have an 18 year old daughter who graduated last year and a 12 year old daughter who's still attending Delphian and moving her way through the program. So I've seen the information that I'm going to share with you firsthand. I'm also a Delphian alumna, class of 94. So I've personally experienced these tools in with educators working with me as a student and also as an educator teaching students at the school, uh, working with the students that I work with and um, experiencing it as a parent. So I have um, many different hats that I've experienced these tools with, and I think that they'll be useful. I hope they'll be useful to you. We have a Q&A box, um, a Q&A little chat uh, box that you can enter any questions that you have um, or any um, anything you'd like to share, struggles that you're uh, running into as a parent perhaps, um, and anything else that you, um, you know, that you find uh, might be useful for others as well. So let me see. Um, I am just going to um, enter full screen. Okay, let's see if we have an audience Q&A. Um, sorry, this is me, my technological, um, there we go. I resume share here. Sharing is paused. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Ah, here we go. Okay. All right, good. So um, let's see, let's move on. Okay, so the first, 
Um, students, so what, one of the first things that I wanted to cover is students have lost learning due to COVID-19. And I pulled up some various articles. I just wanna go over some of the, you know, the, the ramifications of what's happened and some of the consequences of what has happened as a result um, of this. And then let me just get my screen share to, to work properly here so that I make sure that you're able to see what I'm doing. Um, bear with me just one minute. For whatever reason, it's not in present mode. So let me just see if I can get it into present mode here. There we go. Okay, good. All right. So here are some of the consequences that I have found from uh, reading some articles. Some people have done some studies already on what's happening with COVID-19. Um, so state and federal lawmakers have responded obviously by pouring trillions of dollars into the economy to address the immediate costs. However, there is another important dimension along with this current crisis, um, along which this current crisis uh, will generate long-term costs. And that's the education of our youth and the training of our future workforce. So what are these costs and how exactly will the COVID-19 crisis affect them, meaning the students. There will be at least three sets of populations who will suffer education or training losses, causing them greater future economic pain. So let's take a look at that. One group consists of workers permanently displaced from their current jobs who will need assistance with retraining or reemployment. Another group consists of young adults finishing school, facing a weaker job market and lower returns on their schooling than expected. But the cost imposed on disadvantaged K through 12 students by the COVID-19 crisis might be the greatest of all. Early reports show students in grades K through 12 who lack the essentials at home to master online education are falling further behind. And when I look at this um, statistic here, you know, this, Statistic was studied on uh, regarding different socioeconomic backgrounds and some students that don't have all of the essentials that they need at home in order to study online. But when I think about this, I think about it more broadly in terms of students who have the essential skills and routines and habits and confidence and academic um, foundations that they need in order to continue progressing online at home. And I mean, we can look at us as parents, you know, it's been a long time since maybe we've studied algebra or fractions or percents or dividing fractions, multiplying fractions, you know, there's math is also taught in a totally different way today than it was when we were in school. And you might be helping your child through some of these you know, some of their lessons and thinking, I, this is not how I studied math. This isn't what I studied and feeling yourself maybe perhaps a little lacking in your own educational foundation and feeling a little helpless in your ability to help your child through the lessons that they're doing at home. So there's a lot of essential skills and tools and things that we need as parents and that our children need in order to successfully learn online away from the normal academic setting that that they're used to. Okay, so that's kind of what I think of when I look at these tools and the fact that children most likely um, have a disadvantage um, in starting this upcoming school year. The impact of lost learning among students is not properly if the impact of lost learning among these students is not properly mitigated, achievement gaps that have existed for decades will only get worse. And this will be true even if schools around the country reopen and remain open next fall. If they don't, the gaps will widen further to potentially calamitous levels. If this happens, an entire cohort of students could also fail to attain the skills employers need to create a productive economy. 
economic success today and even more so in the future will require well-educated workers who have mastered a range of cognitive and analytical skills as well as social and communicative ones in the K through 12 years. Such students can then successfully undertake the kinds of post-secondary education that will make them productive throughout their careers. You know, when you've really mastered the, the social, communic communicative skills, um, cognitive and analytical skills, all of those skills together that kids really learn during their K through 12 years, those formative times, so that they can successfully move on to college and their careers. If an entire cohort of students fails to attain these skills, the losses will be felt not only by them, but by the overall economy. Parents across the nation are growing increasingly anxious for schools with schools closed for months as education experts begin to warn of a possible COVID slide for students heading into summer break. One parent said, I'm worried about where they will be if they're going to be at the level they should be at when they get back into school next year. And this is from Kristen DiCarlo, whose three children are doing virtual schooling. She says, I do think, I do think th though the learning loss is huge. And then um, Megan Kufield, a research scientist with the Northwest Evaluation Association says, it's a kind of double whammy to, of starting to forget and losing that kind of academic mindset, being out of school and missing out on a couple of important months of instruction, particularly for those young kids where we know learning happens at a really fast rate. Drawing on existing data from roughly 5 million students in third through eighth grade, Kufield has been using learning losses typically seen in the summer. You know, we call that um, the summer gap or, you know, things like that. So, um, this is this is what you know we normally see in the summer and um, she's using that data to forecast how extended school closures could cause significant backslides for students currently struggling to adapt to remote instruction um, what she saw was pretty alarming she said kufield predicts that for the students working through the toughest conditions now come fall they could have retained as little as 70 percent of their reading progress and only 50 percent of gains they'd made in math, potentially serious secondary consequences of COVID-19. So what can we do? So that's kind of like the bleak picture, right? Um, I just kind of wanted us to make sure that we're looking at some of the data that's already out there and some of the studies that people are already doing. And now let's look at what we can do, how we can help our children. Um, let me see, I just saw that there was, um, a question that came through. So let me just take a look and see. Bear with me here while I find my Q&A. Um, okay, so Catherine says, as you know, I'm a homeschooling mom of three. So this is not super new to me, but I am getting a lot of requests for help from other moms from all walks and the biggest thing slash question I'm getting is the parents frustration in dealing with their kids upsets slash revolts to schedule slash disagreements, etc. Mostly for the upper elementary school and high school age kids to not having an actual schedule. Uh, so a lot of heightened emotions with kids cooped up with their parents and the parents not knowing how to deal with this. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's a a great example of you know some of the things that are happening out there we, we are hearing similar things where you know the kids are studying they're supposed to be sitting in front of their zoom class or they're on their computers you know way more now than they were before um, because of all the online learning that's happening and um, <clears throat> they they want to get outside they just they need to take a break so parents you know i had one parent that was telling me the other day that she her daughter was just getting really just done with with sitting in front of the computer so the mom said great okay we're going out for a bike ride so she took her daughter out on a bike ride and um and then you know then came back in to resume studying but sometimes that's just kind of where what you have to do when you know when you're in this sort of unusual situation and the normal schedule that you would have is um it's kind of thrown out the window um so so here's some things that 
um, I, that I think we can do. Um, let me get back to my presentation mode here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good. So how to help your child close the gap. Make a plan. That's one thing. And I'll get into all of these things individually as we go along. But number one is make a plan. And when I talk about make a plan, I mean make a plan for next school year. Like make a plan for the summer, make a plan for the school year, how you're gonna set your kid up for success. Number two is increase their academic confidence. You know, during this time, a lot of kids' confidence in their ability to study has basically been shot. They, they don't feel like they can do it as well as they could when they had the whole support system of the entire school backing them. Um, and the, the, the structure of the schedule and the classroom and the desks and the teacher and, you know, all of that, with that gone, you know, their uh, confidence is not as high as it used to be. And that can also make them not want to, to study because they don't, they, they don't have all the skills and tools that they need in order to do it on their own. So we need to help increase their academic confidence and then gain good study skills and habits and repair and fill in any gaps with writing, reading, math, and all subjects. So that's a tall order to fill, but let's just talk about a few things that we can do. So first is make a plan. Um, what you should do, what I recommend you do, is to find out what, how your child's school is planning to mitigate the learning gap caused by COVID-19 school disruptions? Will there be any remediation this summer? What do they have planned? Maybe your school has already let you know what they have planned and, and it's great and it's perfect and it sounds good and you know they're on track. Will they do that in the beginning of the school year? You know, ask for details on how they intend to accomplish this so you know where you need to fill in. And academic remediation. K through 12 leaders can expect that school closings in response to the COVID-19 pandemic will have a similar or worse effect than traditional learning loss on students, academic readiness. It's highly likely that students won't be able to just pick up where they left off in the curriculum. Many students will need substantial review and or remediation before they can move forward with learning new content. And leaders should plan for how their schools will address these needs. So as a parent, I urge you to reach out to your school and find out, you know, get the actual specific details of what they have planned. Make sure that they're looking at that. And then, you know, if they're not, um, then you can fill in the gaps with whatever holes, you know, the school is not able to fill in or do for remediation for the summer or for um, the school year, if there are already, if you can already foresee that, they're not equipped to help fill in the gaps and, and help with that academic remediation, then you know what you can do. You can hire a tutor, you can send them to an academic summer camp. If there are any academic summer camps open, I know we're planning on doing our second session of summer camp is still open for enrollment. Um, so we're still planning on that. So that's a definite, we have you know a really great balance of academics and getting kids out into their environment, getting them off, you know, outside the classroom, out there learning and doing things and having fun and having adventure. Um, so we will balance that this summer here at Summer at Delphi and, and help children fill in those gaps, get the remediation that they need, plus get plenty of hands-on, you know, outside time. So that's, that's definitely something that I recommend you do. Okay, so then talking about increased confidence, validating what's right. So, so like I said, their confidence is probably shot in one way or another, whether that's, um, you know, maybe they're not so great at their own study skills and their own tools. Maybe they're not good at managing their schedule. Maybe they're not good at keeping themselves motivated and driven. Um, and then also while they're at home, they're probably making plenty of messes around the house. And I'm sure you as a parent are expecting your kids to pull their weight while everyone is home, eating more, you know, dirtying more laundry, creating more dishes to wash, more garbage to take out. 
Um, these are all things that I know I, as a parent, um, expect my kids to help with, you know, when they're home more often. Um, so this kind of academic confidence, but also just confidence in themselves could be a little shaky right now because they're just not used to the, the same sort of rigid schedule. Um, and if you're as a parent trying to get things done at the same time while being an educator to your children, and let's say you have a job that's expecting you to get things done, you know, you're, you're trying to balance helping your children while also still, um, you know, bringing in a paycheck and putting a roof over your head. So maybe everyone's confidence is a little shot. Maybe everyone's feeling a little bit overwhelmed, like what Catherine said. Um, so validate what's right. This is really important. And, you know, you can do this for yourself, too. Um, an individual is basically and routinely good, capable of many actions and considerable power. If you only look for things that are wrong, sorry for the typo there. If you only look for things that are wrong and only recognize things that are wrong, then you will never be able to bring about improvement on a gradient because you won't think you have anything right to work with and build upon. It will all just look wrong to you. One is only trying to find things wrong in order to increase things that are right. And that's very important. Validate what's right. If you keep on deleting or improving things that are wrong, all the while maintaining and increasing the things that are right, you eventually wind up with a very right person. You are trying to get a right person. Therefore, if you don't continually encourage right things, you never wind up with a, wrong, with a right person. I'll read that again. If you don't continually encourage right things, you never wind up with the right person. The degree of rightness you have present must exceed the wrongness you are going to pick up. It's a proportional thing. If you want to pick up this little area of wrongness, you have to have rightness present, rightnesses present, which are big enough to engulf it. It's what you validate that counts. So there's a little more. So this comes from this book, um, Education, Fostering Reason and Self-Determinism in Students. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit more from that section on validation. Um, it's what you validate that counts. If you believe an individual as a sane, Sorry, my light just went out. Okay. If you believe an individual as a sane and productive individual, they will be sane and productive, not because you coax them to, but because you are just validating this. You are telling them by your actions and attitude that this is reality, their sanity and productivity. Conversely, by validating an individual's weaknesses and shortcomings, you actually bring them into being you actually bring them into being and make the person weak and make them exhibit more and more shortcomings, making the person less and less strong. It's what you validate that counts. The validation of difficulty will always result in the accomplishment of difficulty. The validation of ability will always accomplish ability. So acknowledging the good points in children. So basically what, what I'm talking about here, and, and I'm sure most of you watching this do this already naturally, but now we have to do this as educators and it's tough it's tough because you know our kids you're you're seeing firsthand where they're weak in their academics you're seeing firsthand you know maybe maybe some weaknesses that the school has your child's school um has uh not noticed or or maybe that's just coming to light now i don't know but Let's look at just like when I think of an example of like my daughter, my 12 year old daughter, who's um, she, you know, we expect her to help wash the dishes. Um, she has to load the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher, put, you know, put the dishes away. And very often we find that some, you know, piece of silverware or some plate or something has some food stuck to it, you know, when it's, when it's technically clean, right? We'll find it in the silverware drawer, we'll pull out a fork and there's food stuck to it. And now I know when I'm cleaning my dishes, I'm scrubbing them, you know, any stuck on food before I put it in the dishwasher to make sure because I know that the dishwasher isn't going to get all of that stuff off. I'll, I'll soak things in advance, scrub it off, put it in the dishwasher, and then let the dishwasher do, you know, the, the heavy duty um, washing and sanitizing for me. So, so we could 
pull out that fork. I could pull out that fork and I could, um, I want you to give some examples too. Just take a minute to write down a couple of examples of how you can or do use this with, with your child. Type them into the Q&A box and I'll read them to everyone so we can share some examples of what we do. But, you know, I could take that fork and I could go to my daughter and I could say, this is dirty. You know, you put a dirty fork back in, you know, you need to clean this. It's dirty. You can't do this. That's not how it's done. Do it right next time. Or I could say, I could take this as a learning opportunity. And I know I've, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking I've already done this a million times with her, but you know, I'll do it again, but I'll do it in such a way as to validate the rightness. So I start off with putting a lot of rightness there. I say something like, um, well, great job on getting all the dishes, you know, unloaded. Thank you for putting them all away. I love that you just, you know, you do your job without asking. That's awesome. Um, I just want to point out this one fork here has some food stuck on it. So in the future, make sure you scrub it off before you put it in the dishwasher, like check all the silverware, make sure there's no food on it, scrub it, put it away in the dishwasher. And then before you put any food, any um, dishes and silverware away after they're clean, just take a look at them, really look at them and make sure they're really clean. And if they're not, then you, you know, you have to hand wash that to make sure that you scrub everything off and, and dry it and put it away. Um, so that's just an example of, you know, a job around the house. Now talking about academics, um, this is a different, this is different and this is tough because like I said, you know, we, um, it's been a while since we've had our education. It's been a while since, since we've studied algebra and fractions and percents and dividing fractions and multiplying fractions and all of that. So I would look at, you know, really pointing out the things that the kids are doing great. Like you're doing such a great job, uh, you know, answering questions in, in your zoom class with your teacher. That's so great. Or, wow, look at how nice your handwriting is when you're doing your math, your math discipline. You know, you're putting everything really nice and neatly and you're using a pencil, not a pen. That's so great. Um, so, wow, you know, look at all this math that you've learned. Like, you know so much about multiplication and division and all of that. So let's, let's take a look at these fractions here. Let's see what, what we can see. You know, I, it's been a long time since I've studied fractions. I'm gonna learn something new too, so let's learn together you know, examples of that. And um, obviously, like, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir when I give these examples, but, um, you know, I just feel like we, we can, as parents, um, you know, we can, it, it's a tough job. It is a tough job. So um, just validating what's right. And it's what you validate that really, um, that really is what's important. Okay, so um, let me go on to the next topic here. Um, okay. So gaining good study skills. Oh, it looks like we have a little Q and A here. Let me just check that before I move on. Where'd it go? Okay, great. So um, this looks like um, Mona says, letting my daughter know I enjoy seeing her read. Yes, that's a great example, Mona. I think that's perfect. Just, wow, I love watching you read. You know, you're such a good reader. Um, that's awesome. That's so perfect. Okay, good. And then let's see here. Okay, we're done. Done with that one. And yeah, anything else that you want to add in there of, of how you work with your um, your children on validating what what's right? Okay, good. Moving on. So Okay, here we go. So also gain good study skills and habits. This is really elementary, but it's something a lot of people, even the, the top educators out there miss. 
And it's the idea that for you to study something, you must know there is something about it that you don't know. Before you start studying something, find out if there's something you could learn about it. And this comes from the learning book that um, is also available at Heron Books. There's a lot more data in this book, but you know, this, here's some examples of this guy. He's thinking, how do bugs eat? Do they go to sleep at night? What do bugs do when it gets cold? And so he's thinking, you know, there's things he doesn't know about bugs so he can find out more about bugs. So it's really, really important that um, the first thing stated in any subject should be its purpose. So I'm just gonna read um, a little something on that. Um, because one of the things, the primary, you know, the primary thing that we're going for, that we're striving for in educating our children is that they have their own drive, their own determinism to study and to learn new things. And forcing somebody to study a subject that they don't have a purpose for or a reason to learn about or don't think there's something there, if they think they know all about it already, that doesn't increase the person's own self-determinism and their own drive to study. So right now, a lot of kids are, are having to sit in front of Zoom and they're, they're having to um, be you know, outside of a classroom and you know, they're sitting there going, well, I don't wanna learn this. I don't wanna study this. You know, what does this have to do with me? So the whole point is to increase that person's self-determinism and find a reason to study what they're studying. Um, in the um, Education, Fostering Reason and Self-Determinism in Students book, um, from Heron Books in the section self-determinism and the ability to reason, it says successful living depends basically upon a person's ability to reason. A person's best weapon is knowledge. Any new discovery or simplification is valid and useful directly in ratio to its enlargement of one's ability to reason with the knowledge one has. For this increases the person's self-determinism and that is the goal. Okay, so um, so obviously the goal is increasing a person's self-determinism and um, let's look at purpose. So having a purpose for studying. This is kind of, like I said, this is really elementary, um, but one of the things that can interrupt a person's own self-determinism is what's called altitude instruction. And many of us have experienced this where someone is, you know, lecturing to you or being condescending or, you know, telling you, telling you how it should be or why it should be or that it has to be and don't question me and that's it. Um, so altitude instruction, all teaching of an academic character has a tendency to be altitude instruction. And altitude means from a position of superiority or higher status which is to say that the facts are handed from a higher plane of learning to the individual on a lower plane of learning. Instructors of the past have been all too prone to teach rather in the fashion that feeds a boa constrictor with a stuffing machine. Um, so, so after, so obviously what we want to do is, you know, as tough as it is, is address your child's self-determinism and having them find a purpose, making it not serious, you know, making study fun and not serious. And you have to do this because, you know, I said so, or because your teacher said so, but like, where, what's the purpose? What, why are you learning this? Why are they trying to teach you this? Let's take a look at this, you know, comparing it with the real world. Um, the education which a person is receiving must have been consistently compared step by step to the known world. You can't step into an abstract in education and never compare it to things which can be actually sensed, measured, or experienced. In other words, education would not be best conducted in a school where the real, real world was very far away indeed. You know, here at Delphian, we balance all of, all of the things that kids are studying, including algebra, science, chemistry, um, history with real world. So for example, we have current events classes where we compare history and past events to current events and how that's affecting the world today and decisions that leaders are making today. 
Um, when we're doing algebra, we're thinking about creativity and imagination and problem solving. And, you know, because it's tough with algebra, like sometimes algebra, it's like, what, what am I going to use this for? I want to be an actress. I want to be an artist. I don't want to be a mathematician or an engineer. So what does this have to do with me? Well, it has everything to do with you as a critical thinker, as a problem solver. You know, when you're an actress or an artist or, um, you know, whatever, whatever artistic or writer, you're going to have to solve problems and you're going to have to compare data that you have to, to new problem, to problems that you have, and then creating a solution for the future and thinking through things logically and algebra walks you through, um, you know, how to solve a problem step by step in a logical fashion to get to an unknown, to figure out an unknown. It's all about figuring out unknowns and, and coming up with the solution to, to a problem, you know, that you, you don't have a solution right now. So how are you going to solve it? What's the shortest way to get from A to B? And then you can, you know, give some examples and things like that. That has to do with problem solving and creativity and using your imagination. Um, that's what algebra helps people do. It helps with their imagination. I mean, scientists and mathematicians and great thinkers and problem solvers that come up with new technology, do you think that they don't have imagination or creativity? No way. They've got so much creativity and imagination and, and they're expert problem solvers and coming up with you know, new technology. Look at Elon Musk taking us to space and um, taking you know, cars to a new, a new place where, it's, you know, where we don't need to rely on fossil fuel and things like that. So this is all about creativity and problem solving and just you know, have them look around and find examples of where, how it can relate to them in the real world. Um, so, and then teaching students to think and with and use the information. So that's really important in finding that purpose. I could go on and on about this, but I wanted to find out if you have any questions that you need answered um, or anything that hasn't been covered yet. So let me know, put your Q&A in the little Q&A box there or share some examples with me. Um, you know, I know there's some really smart parents on this webinar right now, and I know that um, you have some great tips for other parents. So I, I'm totally happy to share those with everyone here who's watching because it's we're all in this together. We're all working together to help our kids right now to um, keep learning and closing those gaps um, that, that were created. So while you're typing in your chats, um, I wanted to share with you something exciting that we've created, which is a free educational consultation. Um, we have a free 30 minute educational consultation with someone here at Delphian um, who is an academic expert. And all you have to do is, um, I'll give you the website you can go to. It's delphian.org slash start dash here. Um, you go on there, there's just this one page. You can see it has a video. It has schedule your free educational consultation. It says, yes, book me in. And then um, you go there and you just choose a time on the calendar and you can schedule a call with one of us and we will, you know, show, we'll give you um, advice on how, what we've done. You know, we've worked with thousands of students over our 44 plus years here as a school. We've had um, hundreds of kids attend our summer camp every summer. And, and what we do in our summer camp is a lot of it is academic remediation because of that, you know, that summer gap that happens where kids end off school, they might have missed some time. Um, in school from illness or vacation or just, you know, totally didn't understand what the teacher was saying, um, spaced out, didn't take any notes, you know, then they failed their class, but they're moving on, they're matriculating on to their next grade, um, regardless of whatever gaps that they had from last year. So in that summer, uh, the summertime, we have our summer camps where we do academic remediation. And we help fill in those gaps. We have diagnostic testing that we do. We see where they're at with their writing, their reading, their math, you know, and then we can place them on some courses that we have that help fill in those gaps that they're missing so that when they start their next school year, they're ready to start it on the right foot. 
Um, so, and, and, you know, and we teach them uh, study skills and we help them with their academic confidence um, so that they really feel like, you know, we've had kids that have come to our summer camp program that have been told that they were dumb. They didn't know how to, they couldn't learn. It was impossible. Um, you know, then they would, they would be here for three weeks, uh, six weeks, um, gaining the academics in the morning, doing the fun camps and the trips that we have in the afternoons and on the weekends. And by the end of the summer, you know, some of these kids were in tears going, I actually know I can learn. I'm not dumb. And it, it breaks your heart to know that, that that's what they're being told um, by other educators. Um, so, and, and I'm not saying that, that all educators say these things to kids, but, but we do have out of the, you know, hundreds of kids that come here every summer we hear these stories. It's not uncommon that their teachers or the school counselor or someone is telling them, sorry, but you know, you can't learn, you can't write, you can't read, you can't spell, you can't do math. You just can't, it's just not part of your DNA. And then they come here for a few weeks in summer camp and they, they realize that they can, they can do that. They just had gaps in their education or they didn't have the right study tools. So, like I said, I could go on and on about this, but um, I think um, I think we have another Q and A here, so I'm gonna take a look at that and see if I can get that. Um, here we go. Oh, thank you. It was great to know all that will apply it from Hadia. Okay, yes, you're very welcome. And then Catherine says, your summer camp is amazing. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Really appreciate that. Um, okay, good. So I, I think, I hope that the information that I shared with you was useful. I encourage you to definitely sign up for this educational consultation. It's totally free. And, um, you know, we're happy to help in any way that we can. Um, and this was great, thank you. Oh, thank you, Catherine. I really enjoyed doing this too. Um, okay, good. Well, like I said, thank you so much for attending. I really appreciate you being here with me today on uh, this webinar. I enjoyed delivering it. And if you have any other questions, um, make sure you email events at delphian.org. If you wanna see if there's other things that you're running into as a parent, as a parent slash educator for your child, definitely let us know. Um, you're welcome, Mona, thanks for, thanks for attending. Definitely let us know. We wanna create more topics like this for you. We wanna be useful to you during this time. And um, you know, we're all in this together, like I said. So um, I will look forward to, to delivering another webinar next week and uh, see you next time. Also, be sure to watch the live streams on our um, Instagram because I'm giving little short tips uh, almost every day on there. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.